Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now I'm trusting the Spirit of God for utterance and also that wherever you are watching this broadcast from, that He will visit you in a mighty way. We're in the new month of October and every promise God has made to us will surely come to pass. Like I've been sharing with you for the past two days now. Now, the Spirit of God have spoken and said, This month, the books will be opened. The books will be opened. And what book is he talking about? He's talking about the unedited book that he wrote concerning your life. So he's not talking about you trying to find your way from where you are. No, he's talking about him bringing you to the place where he ordained before you were born. He ordained before the world began. You were created before the world began. Do you know that? Yes, that's the truth. Praise God. And God is referring to that book he wrote when he made his plans to create you. When he made his plans that at this season you will be in this world. Praise God. And that's what the Lord is talking about for this month. He's opening the books. So I don't know what is in your heart, but listening to me, I admonish you have great expectations. Have expectations for miracles, not just what you can do by yourself. Because what he's about to do is, has nothing to do with what your ability can do for you. He's setting the bar so high because actually you have spent most of your lives living outside what is written in that book. Praise God. So I pray the Spirit of God will guide your heart and your mind. And I also admonish you, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do so. It's important you do. And help me spread this message as it is a blessing to you. Let it be a blessing to others also. We had an amazing time yesterday. The Spirit of God was just flooding in, you know, here with power and healing and, and doing all kinds of things. And that's what he does on every broadcast, whether we say it or we don't say it, whether we call it out or we don't call it out. As long as his word is coming forth, believe me, healings, different kinds of things are happening even right now. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we Make demand for our daily bread like he has commanded us to do on this broadcast. Are you ready? Join your faith with mine as we call and make demand for our daily bread. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey. Let's, let's go back to our, our theme, Scripture, Revelation, Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. Yeah, so John says he saw one who was sitting on the throne and he saw in his hand a book. And that book, nobody was qualified to open it. Nobody was qualified to look into the book. Nobody was qualified, no one in heaven, no one on earth, no one under the earth, according to what John said. But while John began to weep, he said, an elder spoke to him and said, fear not, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed. That's the word he used. He has prevailed and he's going to open the book. Now, interestingly, like I told you on the first day, I became mindful of teaching on the book of Revelation for, for several reasons. Because it's a prophecy. You really can't teach prophecy accurately. You only wait for it to be fulfilled. Most prophecies are understood after the fulfillment of, of, of after they are fulfi fulfilled. That's the truth. Most prophecies are understood after the fulfillment. 
It's after the fulfillment you look back. Oh, now we get what he was saying. Praise God. And I'll tell you something about prophecies. Prophecies given by the Spirit. It's only the Spirit that will tell you that prophecy has been fulfilled. So it's not for you to start looking at signs and looking everywhere. If you live your life that way, you will miss the prophecy. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that amazing? You will miss the prophecy. He who have spoken is faithful and he will bring to pass everything he has said. So your thoughts, your actions, if you want to fulfill that prophecy, you must make sure they are all in tune with what the Holy Spirit is doing today. So John kept saying in the book of Revelation, that Jesus spoke, speaking to him, saying, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You see, sometimes people are giving prophecies and they just think, you know, for example, you're told, look, after you graduate from school, you're going to marry uh, three months after you graduate from school. And now the person is excited, goes to school, starts school, 100 level. And then the person says, oh, I was told three months after graduation, you will get married. I was told three months after graduation, you will get married. And that's all the person is thinking. So anytime the person is writing an exam, three months, three months. How many years more? Three years. Okay. After three years, three months after my graduation, I'll get married. And that becomes the motivation of the person's life. And the person is now doing everything. Hey, do you know the truth? You may end up missing that prophecy because you become too careful, too agitated, that you will not even listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to you now. Everything you want to do or say is what your mind tells you aligns with that prophecy. But that's not the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is actually most times in the opposite direction. Praise God. That's how God speaks. That's how God does his things. It goes in the opposite direction. So you, on a daily basis, must make sure you are led by the Spirit of God. You must make sure you keep a sober heart. It is in soberness that you will fulfill God's, God's word. Yeah, because how the devil attacks you from fulfilling God's word, he attacks your soberness. So when you just wake up for some reason and start making rash decisions, he's trapped you. When you begin to make emotional decisions, he's trapped you. So you must maintain soberness in your mind. You must maintain soberness in everything that you do. Consider what he would have you do in all situations before you take that decision. That's how to live soberness. So you will own up to every decision you take. Not the one you say, oh, this is, he, he's the one that caused it. No, you can't blame anyone for your decisions. You are saying you were under an influence before you took that decision. And God would not listen to you when you talk like that because you talk like you have lost your soul. Praise God. So now John speaking here and he said no one was able to open the book. But thank God for Jesus. He qualified. He prevailed. And he is the only one worthy to open the book. I, I was sharing something with you. And I said, it's amazing how no one knew the content of this book. And everybody wanted to know what is in this book. Praise God. And it's so important to also know that. Now, let me read. Malagabu mm. Supraditanash. Let me read from verse, thank you, Jesus, from verse 6. And I looked, Revelation chapter 5, and I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Take note of that. The seven spirits of God are sent out into all the earth. The seven spirits of God are sent out into all the earth. Now, when he says the seven spirits of God, he is speaking of the completeness of the spirit. The completeness of the Holy Spirit. Now, the seven spirit of God, they are, is what we call today the spirit of Christ. Please understand me. 
The seventh spirit of God is what we call the spirit of Christ. Now, in the Old Testament, he, he they've had they've had different uh, expressions of God and of the Holy Spirit. Mostly, the the parts they have experienced is His anointing. Now, you know, Paul says, "Great is the mystery of godliness." But now, when you have the mind of Christ, when you tune your mind to reason like Him, soon. He will be expressing himself through you so easily. He will, he will interact with you and you will understand what he is saying. And that's what every child of God must crave for. You must crave for the understanding of God. If you don't understand him, you cannot walk with him. Many, many, many people have walked with him. They've had encounters with him. And they didn't patiently, to, to understand God, you need patience. They didn't patiently study him. They didn't patiently understand him, learn of him. Jesus said, remember, take my yoke upon you and learn, learn, learn. He didn't, he didn't say, take my yoke upon you and I'll impact my knowledge in you. No, he says, learn. There is a process of learning. There is an attitude of learning. You must learn of him. How, what do you mean learn of him? Learn to understand how he reasons. Learn to understand how he thinks. Learn to understand the kind of things he says and how he speaks. Learn of him. He said that's the only way you'll find rest for your soul. Meaning you can take that yoke on yourself. And if you don't learn of him, you will have a troubled soul. You'll be doing his work with complaints and complaints. You'll be doing his work with so much trouble and challenges here and there. But when you learn of him, he said, you will find rest for your soul. That's why he came to us and says, my yoke is easy and my body is light. Now, the yoke will only be easy and the body in light when you have rest for your soul. And you will find rest when you take that stand and attitude of learning his ways, learning his thoughts. Now, that's one thing you must strive for. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, he says, the lamb... So the seven spirit of God has, have, have been sent into all the earth. Then he came, verse 7, he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls, bowls of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. The elders, the 24 elders, sang a new song. I want you to take note of this. I'm going to be, we're going to be doing a bit of study. So I want you to really take note of this. He said the 24 elders sang a new song. And what's the wordings of the song? Saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. For you were slain. And have redeemed us by God. And have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Now this is one prayer as a child of God. If you know you are a child of God. Not claim to be a child of God. See, when you're a child of God, there is a weakness of the Spirit in you. Nobody will convince you that you're a child of God. If someone have to explain to you and tell you over and over, look, believe me, you're a child of God. See, 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 see what the Bible says. So you're a child of God. You are not. No, you are not. I, I'm telling you, it's like someone trying to convince you that you're from the, um, you're from the family or the parents that you you have, they are your parents. No, you will know your parents. You will know the voice of your parents. When someone comes and is trying to convince you, then something is really wrong. Every child of God, you know, Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. It's as simple as that. My sheep hears my voice. And they know me. 
See, nobody's going to teach you. How. John said all these things, you know. He says, you don't have that any man should teach you. But as the Spirit teaches you all things and it's true, so you shall abide in him. He said, you don't need anybody to teach you. And that's the truth. Because he is teaching you, he's the one teaching you right in your heart. And he's doing this all the time. So develop courage and boldness in his personality. That's how it works. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So these elders began to worship him and they sang this new song. Now, guess what? After they sang this song, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. They began to worship God and he spoke about, now, what, let, let me read this. Remember, he says, and have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Please keep that in your heart. I'm going to come back to it. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. And thousand of thousands. Saying with a loud voice, What is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And as and such as are in the sea, and all them that are in them, I heard saying, everybody now, everything God has created now, was saying this. Blessings and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Now, immediately after all this worship, the one who took the book from the hand of him who sat on the throne began to open the book. I was sharing this with you on, on, on Monday, I think. It's so amazing that we, re we studied the book of Revelation, but we don't realize something important that was taking place. Every Now, he began to open the book. Remember, the book was sealed with seven seals. So he began to open the seal one after the other. Now, each time he opens the seal, something happens. Each time he opens the seal, something happens. Each time he opens the seal, something happens. Now, what was going on? All those things that were happening was in revolt to the opening of that book. Everything that had become something didn't want that book to be open. Even the creations themselves didn't want that book to be open. Why? Because that book is the book of truth. It is the book of truth. So it was a revolt. So everything you begin to see, it's not God saying, I'm going to judge the earth. It's, it's a kind of judgment. But then the judgment, how do I explain this to you now? It's like you want to do what is right and everybody's now revolting. Now, they are revolting because you want to do what is right. You doing what is right in itself will bring judgment because it will show their error. Now, this is why the devil is fighting the opening of the book. Same also, he's fighting the opening of the book for your life. You know, like they say generally, heads will roll. Praise God. Heads will roll. Why? Because... A lot has been done in darkness for so long. You know, Isaiah said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness shall cover the people. Now, guess what? Majority of what you see on earth today is done in gross darkness. I've, I've told you some time ago that men have lived so much in darkness that they have found how to prosper in darkness. A lot of people are like that. They are okay with the darkness because they've learned how to prosper in the darkness. But brothers and sisters, there is nothing that beats light. And when light comes, every darkness fades away. And what does light do? Light manifests. Light makes manifest. It reveals what is hidden. If you enter a whole room full of darkness, there, are, there might be things in, those, in that room, but you will not see them. But when the light comes on, you'll be able to see everything and then you'll take better decisions. So the enemy fights the light. Why? Because their deeds, which are evil, will be revealed. 
Jesus said it, everyone who does good comes to the light so that their deeds will be revealed that they were done in the light. So Satan fights light because of all his deeds he's done in darkness. He's led a lot of people in darkness. Even good people have been led in darkness. But God is saying, I'm showing up to open the books and do that which is just and righteousness. Praise God. My time is up for today. Listen, I pray for you right now. Everything the Lord has written concerning your life, you will see the fulfillment of them all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Step out today and have a fantastic day. God bless you.